Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we will see how to invoke SOAP web services from JDPM applications, especially those SOAP web services that have got complex data types in it. With the advent of API-driven development model, most of the modern applications typically expose their core business functions as REST APIs. However, there are still legacy applications that continue to expose their core business functions in the form of SOAP web services. So let us see how to invoke such SOAP web services from JDPM applications. To start with, let's take a quick look at a web service. For this session, I've got a simple web service which provides three operations, which are for booking a flight, the cancellation of the booking, and listing the available plane. Now, let's take a quick look at the different complex types that are available as a part of this web service. And we can see that we have got booking data type, and we have got a complex data type for booking cancellation response, and we have got one for flight, and another one for flight request, and so on. Now, the first step to invoke a web service from a JDPM application is to create the Java proxies for the web service. Now, let's see how to do that. And before we create the Java proxies for the web service, it's really important to have a Maven project to be able to hold all of those Java proxies that we will be creating. So let's first create a Maven project. And let me create a simple Maven project by providing a group ID, an artifact ID, a version number, and we've got a simple Maven project ready now. And in this project, we've got some specific folders that are not really required for this uh, proxy generation. So let me remove all those folders and let me create a new folder called resources. And this is the folder that's actually going to hold the WSDL file. So let me copy the WSDL file into this SRC main resources folder. And we've got this WSDL file now available as a part of this project. Now, now that we have got the WSDL file, the next step is to create the Java proxies. Now there are various different ways by which we could create the Java proxies from a given WSDL file. However, the most consistent and the most reliable option would be to use the WS consume executable that's available as a part of uh, the JBPM setup itself. So let's take a look at the WS consume that's available as a part of uh, uh, the JBPM setup itself. So let me execute it and see what are all the options that it has got. And we can see that the executable has got a lot of options, uh, but some of the key options that we would be using now in order to create um, the Java proxies would be uh, to start with the keep, uh, which, which tells the executable to keep or generate the Java sources. And then uh, we've got minus N, which is the no compile option. Um, which informs the WS consume to really not compile the generated sources. And finally, we have got uh, the source option uh, to really specify uh, where exactly we have to place the generated proxies. Now, with these options, let's go ahead and uh, create the Java proxies. Now, let me specify that we would like to place the generated proxies in this folder called SRC main Java. And also let's specify where exactly the uh, visual file is residing, which is going to be SRC main resources, followed by Acme flight service dot Now, once we give this option and execute, we can see that we've got the Java proxies generated for this visual and Let's take a quick look at the generated object models. And we can see that all the generated object models here are consistent. Uh, however, we do see that none of these generated models really implement the serializable interface. One of the most important things to really understand uh, from a key server's perspective is 
all the data models that are going to be persisted as a part of a JBPM process model should be really implementing the serializable interface. Because if the data models are not really implementing serializable, then the key server, which is the runtime part of the JBPM, would not be able to persist those, those objects that are created from those data models. So how do we actually make sure that the generated proxies actually implement the serializable interface. Now, it's going to be simple. Let's inspect the WS Consume options once again, and we can see that the WS Consume also provides the option using which we can provide a specific binding file, especially uh, the JAX B binding or the JAX WS binding, using which we could potentially tell um, the WS Consume to really create uh, by uh, uh, proxies by using this binding file. So I've got a binding file, which is uh, uh, readily available. Uh, so it's a JAXB binding file. So let me just uh, copy that into the sources folder. Um, so we've got the JAXB bindings and let's copy that to SRC main resources. Now, We've got the JAXB binding file, and in this file, if you take a quick look at it, we can see that we have got an instruction to say that all the data models that would be generating, uh, that would be generated uh, by referencing this binding file should be implementing serializable. All right, now that we've got this binding file, now let's provide this binding file as a part of uh, uh, the input to the WS consume and let's generate the proxy uh, once again by providing this reference. So let's uh, provide this now. And the binding file's name is jaxb uh, dot uh, bindings, jaxb bindings XML. So now that we have provided the binding, uh, let's regenerate the Java proxies. And if we go back and take a look at this proxies, now we can see that most of the data models that are really relevant for um, the invocation of the web services have implement, uh, they are implementing serializable interface right now. All right, now that we have got the proxies ready, the next step would be to just create a Java archive out of this um, um, data models that we have generated, the proxies that we have generated. And once we've got um, the archive ready, the next step would be to go back to the uh, JDPM project and start using uh, the specific Java proxy that we have created. Now, in the project setup, um, let's go to the dependency section and add the specific archive that contains the uh, Java proxies that we created just now. So let me specify the group ID, artifact ID, and version number for that artifact, which contains the uh, Java proxies. So once we define this, uh, let's go to the process model and start invoking the web service. So in order to invoke the web service, uh, we would be using the web service work item. So let's take the web service work item and uh, configure it so that we can invoke the web service. So let's say, uh, let's name this as a uh, call like web service. And let's go ahead and provide the required set of uh, data inputs that are required for this work item to be able to invoke the web service. So it has got um, a set of uh, input parameters that it expects. Um, and let's provide the relevant values for each of these um, input parameters. To start with, we've got the endpoint. Uh, so let's get the endpoint for this um, web service, which is going to be this. So let's provide that value here and followed by the interface. And for this web service, the interface that we need to invoke is called Acme Flight Service Interface. So let's provide that value here. And then the mode. Uh, so as you know, the web service work item handler supports two types of modes. One is the synchronous mode and the other asynchronous mode. Uh, and in this uh, specific web service, this, uh, it, it supports the synchronous mode of execution. So we're providing uh, the mode as synchronous here. And the namespace, 
uh, the namespace where all these different uh, options, uh, all these different um, uh, operations are uh, available. So let's provide that here. And the operation, so which is the operation that we would like to invoke? Uh, so for example, let's take one of the operations. Uh, let's say uh, we'll take uh, the book flight operation and let's provide that here and followed by the parameter. So what are all the parameters, the input parameters that are expected by the book flight uh, operation? So we, can, we could get that either from here, uh, which says that the expected um, um, uh, input parameter is called booking, or we could also refer to the uh, specific interface here in the generated proxy, and we can see uh, what's the expected input parameter uh, for booking a flight, and we can see that the expected parameter is once again the booking, um, booking object model. So let's go back to Business Central and specify that the input parameter is going to be of type booking. And as you can see here, given that we have added the Java proxies as dependencies to this project, we can see all the generated proxies, relevant proxy models are available here. So we can choose booking and we got to have a process variable that's going to hold the booking information, which we will create in the next few minutes. Uh, so for now, we can move on to the next parameter, which is the URL. And for the URL, uh, we need to provide the URL of the visual, uh, the URL where the visual is accessible. So let's provide that, followed by the result, which is the output parameter. And once again, the output is going to be of type booking response for a booking flight um, operation. So let's provide that. And once again, to get back the response and hold it in a specific um, process variable, we need to create one. So let's uh, create it now. But before we do that, let's save uh, the configurations here. And let's go to the uh, definition of the process variables. So let's create two process variables. Uh, the first one is the one that's going to hold the input for the web service. And the other one is going to hold the response for uh, from the web service, which is going to be the of type booking response. Now that we've got um, these two process variables, it's time to go back to the data assignments and map those process variables here so that the response, the input can be passed on to this parameter and the response can be obtained back in this process variable. Now let's save this and let's go ahead and complete the usual settings, uh, which is primarily to specify um, the work item handler that needs to be used uh, to invoke this web service. So, uh, so for the web service work item handler, we have got uh, a standard uh, web service work item handler implementation that's provided out of the box by JBPM, uh, which is this. And an important thing to note here is uh, we also have to provide the class loader. Uh, we have to call the constructor which takes in the class loader because we have got certain dependencies now, uh, which contains the, the proxies that are going to be used by uh, the web service uh, invocation during the runtime. So we have to use this constructor, which takes in the class loader as well. All right, now that we have uh, configured this, uh, uh, yeah, before we could deploy and test it, uh, just for the test purposes, let's have um, some, uh, this out statements that will actually print the values of the response that we get back from uh, the web service invocation. So let's say booking ID from the web service is going to be uh, from the booking response object. So let's get the booking response dot. Um, let's see what are all the different uh, methods that the booking response provides. So let's go here. All right, it provides the booking ID. So let's use that. And similarly, uh, let's get the other parameters that comes uh, as a part of the response, uh, which is going to be status as well. So let's provide that. And now let's save it. So what happens now is when the web service is invoked, uh, the relevant input parameters get passed as part of the booking object that we have defined and the response is something that would get assigned to the booking response 
process variable that we have defined. All right, now, now let's go ahead and deploy this application. And I think there's a syntax error here. All right, let's correct that. Uh, all right. Now let's deploy it. Now that we have deployed it, let's try to invoke the web service by invoking a process model. So let's call this uh, and let's start providing uh, the relevant input parameters for the booking object. So we've got the booking ID, uh, we've got a carrier name, we've got the flight number, we've got the type of the flight, and we've got the uh, economy uh, travel class. And with all these inputs, now let's uh, execute this process and see if the web service gets invoked. Let's click on submit. And if we go back to the completed processes, we can see that the call flight process has been invoked successfully. And uh, we can see that the response object is also obtained. And we have also added some print statements and we can see that uh, the web service was indeed uh, really executed successfully and we can see that the booking ID and the booking status has got uh, uh, printed in the console output. All right, uh, with that, we have come to the end of this session. Um, I hope uh, this was uh, informative for you and thanks for watching.